really windy, about 20 to 30 knots, gusting pretty hard at night time. We've had squalls and rain. So we're really grateful that we've been able to get into here, into this creek. A nice little northern whiting. All right, flick on the hose and I'll, uh, I'll clean up the scene of the crime. What are we doing here, Dal? I just, you know, I like to spend a bit of time amongst some heavy industry once in a while. At the moment, we've got a southeasterly wind blowing. It's never going to stop, according to the weather reports. It's going to be till eternity. So we're going to, um, we're just going to hang here. We've got out of the marina. I've got the last bit of cover before we go out through the leads. So we're going to actually have to work our way into a southeasterly, and we're going to do that at four o'clock in the morning tomorrow. Um, it's a lot easier just to raise the anchor with everything ready to sail than to throw off ropes from the marina and all the rest of it. So we want to go out and we want to go out right on the slack tide as we leave through the leads. Um, and just the way the, the local weather patterns have happened, every morning we've noticed that it's still, it's like under 10 knots. Um, so, and we usually get that till 10 o'clock in the morning. So if we leave at four, we've got 30 miles to go to Pancake Creek, which we're looking forward to. So we'll get out there and we'll, we'll, we'll clear the southeasterly component, we'll get out past the reefs and then we might actually be able to pop a sail for the, for the morning breeze and sail the rest of the way. Gladstone was, it was booming for a while there and a lot of yachts stopped coming here and, and I think that the ports were actively discouraging it because it was, it was just crazy here when I was working here. But now it's quietened down again. I know a lot of people sort of look for you know, the next thing before it's discovered. Well, in terms of yachting, with Gladstone it was discovered and now <laughs> it fell by the wayside. But now we got some incredibly uh, good deals on staying in that marina. Mm. And I mean, no one, you know, the, the industry is not really going to attract many people. Some people might like looking at it. But we found a few good spots around Gladstone, didn't we, Pascal? Yeah. There's, you know, there's some nice spots. Um, there, was, there was some nice places to eat just by the water there. We didn't check everything out. Um, our friend Daryl showed us around Tannum. There were some beautiful spots there. So, yeah, if you're sailing up the coast, you could do worse than to, to pull in if you, know, if you need to refuge from the weather, resupply. There was a good chandler at the marina. So, yeah, not a bad spot. It's just, <laughs> it's just to sort of ignore the, the heavy industry just as you're coming in. We got out of the marina this morning uh, before the wind kicked in. Now the wind's kicked in and we're just anchored up waiting. As Troy would have explained to you earlier, we're going to leave tomorrow morning early and I'm just busy, busy, busy trying to get three videos done so that we can go out and not worry about trying to find internet to upload to you while we're out adventuring. So um, just you might notice we've got a new computer if you hadn't seen it before. It's a gaming computer. We purchased it in Cairns um, because we found that it the graphics processing unit in it could um, really handle the production quality of our videos. Um, whereas before with our MacBooks that wasn't uh, working out so well. And the, a lot of people have also asked what editing software we're using. We're using a free beta version of DaVinci Resolve. And it's amazing. It's brilliant. We love it. Just keep in mind that we can't always reply to your comments straight away. We do read them all when we eventually get back into reception, so just be patient. Um, we really enjoy your comments, so yeah, just be patient if we can't get back to you straight away.
We've been at Pancake Creek now for about two days. Uh, the weather's been just awful. Really windy, about 20 to 30 knots, gusting pretty hard at night time. We've had squalls and rain. So we're really grateful that we've been able to get into here, into this creek. We had a bit of a hard two days of kind of short hard sails, um, but it was definitely worth it to get in here. And actually, because it was in such a short amount of time, it was quite fun. So we've actually been spending the last two days just um, chilling out on the boat. I've been editing on the computer. Yesterday I actually made a cake in the saucepan, steamed a cake, and that was delicious. It's the last hour of the um, falling tide. Troy's gone up the creek and he's uh, going to see, we're going to see if he comes back with anything. It's a little bit too far for me to jump on the dinghy with him, so he's just gone up by himself to suss it out. Uh, if the creek's got crab or stingray or more fish to be had, we might move the main boat up there. But we're, um, uh, we're sheltering in this creek and there's about, yeah, there's about five, yeah, four cats and a monohull here. Um, and it's been really social. Last night we went around for drinks and tomorrow we're going to all have dinner together on the barbecue on one of the bigger cats. So Troy's on the hunt to get a whole lot of food to share with everyone tomorrow. So that'll be really nice. It's really one of the great things about being a yachty on the water is meeting heaps of like-minded people out having their own adventures. And hopefully later today we're going to go pick up one of the guys on another cat, Grey, and he we're going to go pumping some yabbies. So when we were at Yellow Patch, we um, met a couple of fans, Brad and Mick, and they showed us how to pump yabbies to get bait to catch whiting. And uh, Brad kindly found us at Gladstone Marina and gave us his old yabby pump. So we've got a yabby pump, so we want to get pumping yabbies. And I actually find the whole thing really a lot of fun. So I'll take the camera with me and I'll show you how it's done. Oh, that was a pretty short morning's work. So I just went up for a bit of a wander on the creek and having a bit of a look around, took my spear along and it's relatively easy to get a feed of stingrays. They're probably overlooked by most cruisers, but they're really popular Aboriginal food, probably coming to the end of the season when they hunt them. Um, but they like to mix it with a nice rich fatty liver with the meat. And out of season, like in the, in the dry or in the winter, they don't tend to go as crazy on them, but they're, they're a food source that's available all the time. And it's a, it's a fair bit for not too much effort. So. What do you know? The traditional Australians know a little bit about <laughs> getting a, a feed fairly in a fairly straightforward manner. We made this in uh, Rockhampton, that spear, and as you see, there's no barbs or anything. This is just spring steel, and a little bit of corrosion and the way it spreads on impact is enough to hold these stingrays and actually pull them vertically up out of the water. There's a few kilos there. Yeah, they're big stingray. Yeah, they're pretty good. So. Uh, We've got, it, we've got some uh, people to introduce to the taste of Stingray, so I've got two of them. Normally I just stop at the one, but there's a, there's a bit of a dinner roundup coming up in tomorrow, I think, so we're going to need just a little bit of extra food. So this spear itself, um, there's a little bit of rust going on, but that's a desirable thing. It actually makes the, makes the shafts grab better. But this is spring steel out of, a, out of an inner spring mattress. Um, just around the outside, not the, not the coily bits, but the framework that makes up a, up a bed. So I've got seven points on this, and it's a little bit like how wire rope is made. If you have seven, there's six around the outside and one in the centre, it makes it quite a, round, quite a round little package that you can easily stick down there. And those seven points, I mean, <laughs> when they go in, it really holds well. So, I'm pretty happy with this spear. And look, it's not even all that straight. <laughs> You know, but it doesn't matter because the end and the actual spear point are roughly in the same plane. That second stingray today I got with a throw, I actually lobbed it and it, it got in there really well. So oh, good job. Yeah, it was going away from the boat. I'd, I'd sort of duffed the first shot and it did a quick pirouette and I was able to get the spear and as it took off I threw it and it, and it just nailed it. Remember when we were knocking around with Roland up in Gove? And he, they were saying that they particularly liked the bull rays. Or, and when I was asking them about what a bull ray was, he was describing they had that cow style tail. Mm. They've got like a black fin on the underside of their tail. Yep. I might just move our sailing rope away. What do you reckon, Pascal? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to sort out some space in our frigidaire. It's going to, 
it will take a bit. That's uh, right. This is a little bit tricky in such a confined space. Um, and without a ton of experience in processing stingrays, but what I'm doing is this is this is I'll hold it up when I'm done. It's sort of like a lady's corset. It's made out of little rays of cartilage all joined together in one flat plate. So processing a stingray is sort of just running a knife along a flat surface and taking the flesh away. And then once that's done, of course, then we've got to get the skin off. I tried doing this with a, a knife that wasn't sharp and it was, <laughs> it was tough. So, um, what am I trying to say, Pascal? You, you always want a sharp knife, don't you? Yeah. Like a knife is a tool and you want a, a well-maintained tool. No different, so. So this is proceeding not, you know, not too bad. Like I said, I don't have a ton of experience processing stingrays. I'm sort of getting into it in a, a bit more of a big way now. Okay, now you can get a thinner fillet, fillet off the underside. Feel where the wing goes again. And it's just, it's basically a repeat of what you did on the top. But like I said, it is thinner. And it can be a little bit tricky. Some people might prefer to just cut this straight off the animal um, and then and then do it. I might try it. For the other one? Let's just, no, no, I'll, I'll try that right now. I'll just, I'll cut this wing off. Mm -hmm. Because the cartilaginous skeleton of them is not tough stuff at all. Like mm -hmm. that, these, the way they swim, it's it's really, yeah. You know, unless you stick a great big spear in them <laughs> before you do that, but they they're really majestic when they swim along. I, I really love watching stingrays underwater. Like if you love them so much, why are you eating one? You love all fish. I love all fish, don't I? Mm. It doesn't stop me from uh, turning it into food. That's that's quite easy. Once you've taken that, mm -hmm. once it was quite easy to take those, the dorsal, you know, the back fillets off while it was on the animal. But I think this is the the way to go on the on the belly. Maybe someone's watching this that's had more experience with stingrays. Um, feel free to feel free to chuck your comments in. Um, so what are you doing? Try. It's not the way to do it. It's a messy thing to do to your yacht, isn't it? Processing a stingray in there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to um, have a little go at trying to make space in our fridge for okay. for the stingray. Yep. I think we've demonstrated how you can do it. I mean, we're not professionals at it yet, so. Um, I'm going to just skin it. But that's, oh, all right. But that's the same as skinning anything. Turn the water pressure off? Yep. So, we'll get a bit of a decent start on it. Good incision. I guess anyone that's, anyone that's watched a fair few of our episodes has seen skinning done before. But I like to do the same thing and um, I like to put a little cut in the skin. Stingray skin's quite soft so I'll have to be fairly gentle. But then I just lay the, the knife fairly flat. And wherever possible I just try and move the skin rather than the knife. How are we doing? Oh, look at that. It's tough to skin this stuff. You don't have the hard scales. But... No, I recovered. Oh, cool. <laughs> so, I may actually have to just sort of really got to feel your way through this stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, you need that sharp knife, eh? It, yeah, you do need a sharp knife, otherwise it'd just tear it off. So where it got really skinny here, yep. it was really hard to... No, that's pretty good. It's not bad, is it? No. We'll, we'll just, we'll just Plus the texture as well, you can see it's really um, noodly, <laughs> so you don't have that firmness. Noodly. Noodly. Ooh, that was just like jelly. So there it is. Yeah, pretty agreeable. Probably not if you're a vegetarian, you'd be like, bleh. 
<laughs> but um, no, I think it's pretty good. But the muscle fibres are in their own discreet little tubes. Mm. So it is unusual. So there's quite a lot of meat there for two stingrays. I'm just putting it into little containers to put it into the fridge. Good work, Val. Thanks, baby. All right, flick on the hose and I'll, uh, I'll clean up the scene of the crime. Oh, I've heard of the guys saying, oh, you need some bloody yabbies, you know? Mm. What the hell are you? What are yabbies? <laughs> Yeah, oh, well, I was just, I just yeah, took the spear for a walk. Yeah, grab him. Yeah, you got two, right? Yeah, grab him. Yeah, you got two, right? We're getting him. Perfect. Awesome. Oh, that's the way. Oh, yep. There's one there. Oh, here. Yeah. Oh, you want to put it there? Mm. <laughs> oh, biggie. Oh, he's a biggie. Don't cover him up. Yeah, okay, so well the tide's on the rise, so those yabby beds, the water will be covering those up. And the nice thing about that is um, where you get the bait from is also where the fish are going to be hunting. So you get the bait from where you're going to go. I was just having a look at the, the cruiser's guide to fishing and just see if they've got anything about yabbies. I mean, they're a pretty popular bait here in Australia. I don't know if, um, if people are familiar with them around the world. There we are. As usual, I like to just use a, a uni knot. So it's the same rod that we use for barramundi tuna and everything else like that, but I haven't got a I haven't got a leader or anything like that. I've cut all that off. So we're just going to a light split shot, a little bit of red rubber tube, and quite a small hook because we're going to be using yabbies. We've gone and got some yabbies and. If you just have a look at this footage, you can see that it catches sharks and all sorts of stuff. What? Cute. Look at this little, this little killer. <laughs> little black tip shark. Even sharks like yabbies. I didn't expect to be catching a shark on yabby. <laughs> Mm, cool. Black 
chat. We have caught a few whiting, but um, we just thought that today would be a good day to come and try and have a bit of a crack at them. So we've brought our yabbies, we've got everything sorted out, and we're going to fish on. So when you're a travelling yachty, you, one of the things that you miss out on is having local knowledge, and that's a really, you know, it's a really big deal for fishing, is knowing what's going on in your local area. Oh, Oop, robbed. Robbed. So, in the Kimberley and in Arnhem Land, we were fishing the last hour of the outgoing tide, and the reason that we were doing that is because those big river systems would narrow down, and the gutters or the little trenches in the mud flats emptying the broader flats. As the tide went down, of course, they narrowed down into a small gutter. Um, the barramundi and jacks and other predatory fish could just stick their snout right in there and it made it easy for them to get food. So, of course, they would only feed around about those times because they have an energy budget, you know, they sort of weigh things up. But here, we need a higher tide for, we're hunting uh, whiting, so we need a higher tide for the fish to come up and over the flats and they're, they're chasing and the reason the fish are coming up on the flats is they're chase chasing these little yabbies here. <laughs> Alright, we're fishing at this creek mouth and there's a few undersized fish here. We want to release them fairly well. Um, if I can avoid it, if I'm going to release the fish, I prefer not to touch them at all and interrupt their, their slime. Maybe you've seen a few D hookers, um, or if you haven't, maybe you want to make one. We used to use them, they just had a, a bit of stainless steel pipe across and you could grip it like that and, and use it. But if you're ever wondering how these actually work... So, you take your D-hooker, you've got your fish there, you catch the line in the crook, like a shepherd's crook, and you keep going down and you pull the line tight till it gets in the bend of the hook, and the fish will be like that, and then you flip it up in between your arms towards your body, and the fish will come off. Gone. Don't know where it went. Where'd he gone? He's gone. <laughs> and that's exactly what you want with a fish, isn't it? As soon as he's gone, he's... Choo. Well, that was a fairly quick robbery. Mm. Pelican scabs. <laughs> you see all the mullet? Clash of the pelicans. Having a bit of a trouble making the jump to um, fish this size. Hmm. Well, I don't think we really uh, adversely affected the whiting population today. <laughs> um, we caught a few little ones and then um, a little, a few whiting of size, that wasn't too bad. We've just uh, knocked the sides off them and we'd, we just like to leave them overnight in the fridge in vinegar and what that does is the pin bones, the fine bones that go down along the lateral line, they get dissolved by the vinegar um, and makes them soft enough to eat. So we've scaled them, filleted them, throw them in vinegar. Um, those, the fine bones that I can't really, you know, like we lose too much off those little fillets getting those out, the vinegar will handle those. And it makes it taste really nice as well. Mm. You have like salt and vinegar whiting fillets. Mm. It's good.
Mm. How is it? It's delicious. I really like this vinegar. And panko is good. Mmm, vinegar fish with panko. It's delicious. Thank you for tuning into Free Range Sailing. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as it really helps get our video out to more viewers. If you'd like to keep track of us in real time, there is links in the description to our Facebook and Instagram page, as well as loads of other great information that you might find useful.